areas of my interest are, are developing some of these smart microbubbles so this will actually adhere and be retained within regions of disease. A very different type of an, uh, uh, an imaging uh, uh, methodology that we use for this. But essentially what we do is we take these microbubbles and we actually attach ligands onto the surface of these uh, agents. We can actually get somewhere between 60 and 120,000 ligands onto the surface of each 2 to 4 micron microbubble agent. And in our laboratory, we've attached, you know, I've, I've got just schematically illustrated here a monoclonal antibodies, but using different, different uh, uh, conjugation strategies, we put antibodies, we put uh, uh, peptidomimetics, we put glycoproteins, we put all, all kinds of things onto the surface of these microbubbles for doing phenotypic imaging. And this actually gives us a very different uh, type of, a, uh, of information. Here's an example of bubbles that are targeted uh, to activated monocytes or leukocytes using an activated PMA-activated uh, uh, neutrophil with microbubbles that will attach to the surface and actually be, eventually be phagocytosed. Here's an example of an inflamed venule where you actually have a, a fluorescently labeled microbubble which is no longer freely circulating through the circulation but actually is attached to these leukocytes in this area of TNF-alpha-activated uh, uh, inflammation. It's a slowly rolling leukocyte. You can, hopefully you guys can see these small little circles here which are adherent leukocytes. Here's one that's actually di diabetesing out of the vessel. And we've actually look, used this to actually look at uh, leukocyte recruitment and post-ischemic inflammation in mouse and uh, uh, canine models of ischemia reperfusion. Uh, these are examples of some uh, alpha-V targeted microbubbles which are targeted against angiogenic phenotype uh, uh, vessels. This is again using intravital microscopy where we can actually look at microbubbles that are starting to adhere to FGF2 stimulated uh, microbubbles. Uh, why are we doing this? Why molecular imaging? Uh, in white, we have a lot of the things that we're interested in from a clinical perspective, which is very early diagnosis of disease, for example, very early diagnosis of tumors or metastasis, uh, monitoring disease progression or response to therapy. I'm very uh, active in, in working with some of the GI folks at UVA in, in uh, detecting and following the response to therapy in Crohn's mo uh, models, inflammatory bowel disease models using uh, MADCAM targeted uh, agents looking at prognosis, customizing therapy according to disease phenotype. But a lot of the people in this room are interested in mouse model uh, imaging, where you're interested in preclinical models, looking at uh, uh, defining pathophysiology, which molecular imaging can help with, as well as evaluation of different ways of, of modulating uh, uh, phenotype and disease pathways for optimization of therapy. Um, and these are just a, a just kind of a, a little sprinkling of some of the images with high-frequency imaging using different all kinds of different systems that are, are possible